Hi, New Life Church. My name is Chad Denman, and I serve at our NLC Saline County campus. And I'm so thankful that you are joining us for the table devotion. And these are moments that Jesus would have around the table. And this moment that we're going to be talking about is going to be this moment of the Passover meal. We also would refer to it as the Lord's Supper. And there's so many moments that are happening within this time that Jesus is having with the disciples before he's arrested, before he's crucified. And I want to talk about these moments for just a moment. But one of the biggest things, the word that really kind of defines this moment for me would be intentionality. Like the entire moment at the table and even outside of the table, but just even in that preparation as he's gathering the disciples around in this room, you would see the intentionality that Jesus would have with his disciples. And what do I mean by intentionality? Let me read this to you. Intentionality means every decision from the most obviously significant to the seemingly mundane matters. To do something with intentionality means to do it thoughtfully with clear purpose and an eye on the desired result. So as we go into this particular passage of scripture, we're going to see a couple of different accounts that Jesus has with his disciples. I want you to think about intentionality and what he brings to his disciples, but also what he's trying to communicate and convey to us because he's intentional. <clears throat> and so in this night, when we were at the Passover meal, you could hear this discussion happening amongst the disciples, like who's the greatest? Like, am I the greatest? I, I think I'm the greatest. And they're having this, this, I don't know if it's bickering, but they're having this discussion. It could be bickering. Uh, they're real people. They have real emotions. They also want to be first. Don't we all want to be first? I know sometimes around our dinner table, it's like I can notice within my boys this kind of one up in a sense. So if one of my boys is telling a story, there's another story that follows and it's trying to one up the other one. I can just kind of see this happening around the table with Jesus and the disciples. You'll see actually in John chapter 13, two through 17, this moment, okay, happening. And in this moment, again, the disciples are having this discussion and Jesus, instead of rebuking them, getting on to them, or just saying, hey guys, I'm gonna give you some instruction here with his words. He actually gives us this example of what it looks like to be great and how to become great. And it's out of this place of serving one another. This is the same night that the Passover meal is happening that he's also washing the feet, the feet of his disciples which again, all of them are feeling uneasy about it. I mean, we're talking about the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, who humbly positions himself in such a way where he's washing the disciples' feet. I think you and I, and most definitely the disciples, would feel this way. No, Jesus, we're supposed to be washing your feet. You're the Messiah. You're the Son of God. But what are some of the things that we can learn, lessons that we can learn from this moment? You can see this account, Matthew chapter six, uh, I'm sorry, 26, 17 through 35. It says, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples on the evening before his arrest and crucifixion. Let me give you some backstory. The event is often referred to as the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper. And during the Passover meal, Jesus instructed his disciples to eat bread and drink the wine in remembrance of him. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But this is also the night that he washed his disciples' feet, which was a, sim was sim a symbolic act of humility and servanthood. At the Passover meal, Jesus also predicted that one of his disciples would betray him and that he would be crucified. This was a pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry and marked the beginning of his journey to the cross, like that moment. I just want to pause for just a second. I'm so thankful that Jesus still endured the cross. Even though there were going to be moments of betrayal, even when there were going to be moments where disciples denied him, ever being around him, knowing him, it still didn't change his heart for what he was going to accomplish because he knew what we needed. We needed salvation and what was going to be presented in that or how that was going to be done for us in that was for him to endure the cross. I love how Jesus' heart was just set on 
what he needed to accomplish for me and you. And he didn't lose sight of what the father had asked him to do. Because if he would have taken a different course, me and you would not know this hope. We wouldn't know this salvation. We wouldn't have this new life. We wouldn't know forgiveness. We wouldn't know this grace and this love. Let's just keep going. (laughs) A lot to unpack right there. But the Passover meal that Jesus shared with his disciples offers several important lessons that I believe that we can learn from. One of those is just, again, the meal was one of teaching, fellowship. It was foretelling of his impending sacrifice for redemption of humanity. So in this moment, I think again, with the Passover meal and with the Lord's Supper, this particular context of scripture, he's gonna be showing us the importance of fellowship. Like Jesus gathered with his disciples to share a meal and spend time together. The emphasis, the value of community, and the importance of gathering together with other believers to encourage, support, and strengthen one another. That's one of the things, that's one of the lessons that we can learn from this moment. Another thing is, is just the importance of humility. By washing his disciples' feet, Jesus demonstrated the importance of humility and servant leadership. He showed that true greatness comes from serving others rather than seeking power or recognition. There was a moment that I had about 11, 12 years ago working with a nonprofit organization, a Christian nonprofit organization in Swaziland, Africa, where they were trying to feed and take care of the orphans of that country. And one of the things that we had the opportunity to do as orphans were coming and we were feeding them was to wash the feet of the orphans. And I'll be honest with you, in this moment, it was one of the most humbling, powerful moments that I've ever experienced outside of salvation. Was to know that in this act of just washing the feet of the orphans, yes, were they messy? Yes, were their feet infected and were their cuts and all of these things? Yes, but in that moment, it didn't matter because what was portrayed and what was given in that moment was love. It was an unconditional love that these orphans were able to feel, but I was also able to feel back by the way that they embraced it and they were just so thankful for it. Listen, it's not about power. It's not about all the things that we can grab a hold of. It's not about recognition. It's about humbly positioning ourselves in a way where we see need that is around us. It's not about us. It's about the people that are around us. And this is where it gives way and gives opportunity for people to encounter Jesus, like his love, because it's unconditional. It's sacrificial. It's putting his needs aside to be able to be that help and to be able to fulfill that need that's in front of them, which was us. This is the reason why he endured the cross. Another lesson that we can learn is the reality of suffering. Like Jesus predicted his own betrayal and crucifixion during the Passover meal, demonstrating that suffering is an inevitable part of the Christian life. It's gonna be uncomfortable. But he also showed us that even in the face of suffering and death, there is a hope in the promise of resurrection and eternal life. Like there's a hope of knowing that the Spirit of God lives with inside of us who's going to carry us through those suffering times, through those challenging times, and is going to use us as an example of what it looks like to have that strength, to have that joy, to have that peace that passes all understanding. People are going to ask, what do you have that I don't have? How are you able to stay secure and stable and strong in the midst of the things that are happening around us? Well, it's in Christ. But thinking about, again, the Lord's Supper and the breaking of bread and the covenant, the blood, the wine that they drank was in this place of just remembering the ultimate sacrifice. So whenever you and I go into this Easter season, specifically Good Friday, and we take that bread and we eat that, remember the crucifixion, remember his body and what it endured, the sacrifice that he made for me and you for the redemption of our lives, the forgiveness of our sin. And then as you drink, remember that represents the blood. It's forgiveness, it's his grace. This is where we find new life. It's all because of him. Thank you, church, I love you a lot. Happy Easter, God bless.